We're back for day four of the seven day challenge where I'm posting seven videos in seven days to close out 2023. And you know we had to bring the boy on, Mitch Pelkey. How are we doing? The fellow Italian, I'm good, man. We're Let's out here. Go. First times in the uh, the Dubes crib. It kind of reminds me of the Ritz Carlton. Uh, they're having me over for a night and uh, his mom is actually making uh, some nice salmon tonight. So I can't wait to test that out. But we're here, we're gonna dive into D1 D3, kind of compare them both, and yeah. I'm excited to film another video with my guy. Let's go. So yeah, so we're really gonna dive into the differences between Division One lacrosse that Mitch played for four years at Ohio State, yep. and Division Three lacrosse, which I'm currently playing at Stevens Tech, and I'm a sophomore. What's the mascot of Stevens again? The Ducks. Go Ducks. Stevens Ducks. I mean, I'm rooting on. for the Ducks this spring. You, you can bet that. Yeah, uh, but no. you can see us in a Final Four. Oh, I'll, I'll be there. The for link. Sure. Let's you, go. You'll see it. With number ninety-one. Ninety-one. There you Let's go. 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 I love Let's that. Go. Obviously, you did your four years at Ohio State, Big Ten, Division One team, right? Yep. There's going to be a lot of differences between yeah. a high-level Division One team and a, a high-level Division Three team in the yeah. MAC Freedom. The first thing I kind of wanted to talk about today was everyone's favorite, the gear. Yeah. Right. The gear mm -hmm. is everything. Is everyone's first thing they ask, right? Yeah. So obviously, Division One school, you guys are getting a lot more gear than us. Yeah. What is the gear like situation over there? You're getting everything for free and everything, right? Yeah. So at Ohio State, our sponsors were STX and Nike. Okay. Uh, I truly think the best uh, sponsorships within the sport of lacrosse. Yeah. And being at a, a school that has a big football team, you get a lot of perks. You know, the team up north, Ohio State. <laughs> Penn State, those schools, you get a lot of gear because the yeah. football team makes the school a lot of money. To get gear, it was what gloves, what elbow pads, what sticks do you need, yeah. like anything chipped, broke, you can get it on demand. I think that was a cool part, right? Like, especially when I was going through the recruiting process mm. at 15 years old, like that was a very big part of the whole process, yeah. right? So much eye candy. Yeah. Playing, obviously, it helps so much if, if anything is broke, or anything needs to be fixed, you just go in there. I think a big thing for me, I have a really fat foot, and I was able to get a wide <laughs> custom cleat. Okay. So that was that was a perk for me. Yeah. Uh, but I just think it was just a thing like where we could go out and play at our best and didn't yeah. need to worry about the little things of like, oh my God, they have the head, yeah. can I get new cleats? And what was it like for you? So you guys had like a equipment manager and everything. Equipment manager yeah. came to all the games, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. he'd be the guy in the yeah. sideline screwing in different heads yeah. in your shaft broke, stuff like that. Yeah, that's funny. Cause we actually had an equipment manager, but I don't know what happened. I, we don't have them anymore, but we, we get helmets for free. We can't keep them. Oh, really? We get gloves for free every year. So that's like the best thing. We get brand new Maverick gloves yep. and we get Maverick heads, no strings, no shafts. But the best thing that we get in terms of like amount is like the apparel. So oh, we get okay. like a ton of apparel. We'll get like shirts and like yeah. sweatshirts, but we don't get cleats. Yeah. So if you have a fat foot, you got to figure that out on your own. Yeah. I see but, you rocking like the maroon Adidas. Yeah, so. No, uh, yeah. I got the, uh, the Addy Zeros. Yeah. Yeah. The Addy Zeros. Shout out Dev. And I think that yeah. kind of segues us into another important aspect. Yeah. And I was just down at Salisbury filming the last episode of the uh, Chasing Championship Weekend yeah. series. And they mentioned you guys only have a certain number of practices yeah. in the fall. Yeah. We have eight hour weeks or 20 hour weeks, but we're still going at it Monday through Friday, potentially Monday yeah. through Saturday. So what was it like for you currently at Stevens? Yeah. So right now we just finished up our fall ball. They changed it from last year. So last year we had like, I want to say two or three practices a week for a month. Yeah. Now they changed it and it's like 24 practices, somewhere around that number. So we were going for two months, one practice to three practices a week mm. for two months and ended it off with a play day. Played Skidmore and Scranton yeah, every we year. We did good. We yeah, actually yeah, beat up good. on them pretty good. Like you guys that. can go watch that video yes, right sir. now. Then we're just done. Yeah. So when we got on campus, we're in eight hour weeks, kind of getting the flow of things. Yeah. And then in the fall, the coaching staff at each school can kind of pick four weeks okay. in a row. We yeah. call it like fall ball. Okay. So our coach picked usually the month of October for when we had fall ball. Essentially, that was four weeks. Each week was 20 hours per week. Okay. I truly thought it was the worst part of the year. <laughs> it's like the hardest part because That's so like funny you're going at it every single day yeah. and then the weekend comes around and there's no end goal of playing somebody. Yeah. Right after, you know, Christmas or Thanksgiving break, come mm -hmm. back for finals and we have a couple practices here and there and guys start to go back. But yeah. When the season starts in the spring, guys come back right around January 10th and it's go time until you guys lose in May. Yeah, so that brings me to the spring too, right? Yeah. It almost looks identical to yeah. you guys. I think that the Division One and the Division Three spring looks yeah. almost the same. I think even in high school, we played at high level high schools. Yep. It looks similar to that, right? Yeah. Practicing every day. It might be just my team, but we're going full force for two hours every single day at practice. Yeah, I think for, for Division One, it was a little bit scaled back. They yeah. really, really cared about our body recovery yeah. and I, I feel like it's a little bit different 
different at the Division Three level. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think that you definitely saw that. We yeah. talked about that for your uh, championship series. The D ones, they got to get these guys. They're they're on scholarship and they they're tools to yeah. their to what they're building, right? Yep. Division Three, we're not on scholarship. Kind of feels like high school. You kind of sign up for the team. There's yeah. no cuts. Yeah. But but we're a high level team. It's it's not yeah. trying to knock Stevens or anything. Yeah. It's just what it is in Division Three. For example, we're going to the trainer, right? I yeah. got a tweaked ankle. I got to go on the app. I got to go sign up for an appointment. And then hopefully the trainer for multiple other sports is available. Wow. Right? So whereas like you guys, it's definitely yeah, a little for different, us, right? I mean, you know, if anything, concussion, tweaked ankle, a yeah. little cut, yeah. you walk in there anytime, there's like 20 trainers there ready yeah. to, to help you out. Even student trainers there that exact, know exactly what they're talking about. Yeah. Even the facility aspect, and again, this goes back to schools that have big football teams that really are these huge money makers for yeah. the sport, right? I mean, it's, it's no secret that Alabama and Ohio State wouldn't be those two schools without the football teams. And our facility was open really 24 hours a day. So not only could we go in and, and get checked up on nine to five, but like yeah. also if we wanted to go hit the wall, yeah. like we could go do that whenever. Yeah. So I think that's just another perk. But again, it's, it's all about what you want. Like you said, like D3 feels like high school ball. When I was out at Salisbury doing that last episode, like yeah. that's what it felt like. And it's not a bad thing at all. It's just about all about what do you want? Like yeah. Coach Berkman at Salisbury told me like he has recruits come in and, and sit on the couch and, and he talks to them and he asks them like, you're getting recruited to buy lower D1 teams, like that's why you're here. But what do you want out of your experience? Do you want to go there, mm -hmm. practice essentially every day, go barely 500, or do you want to come here at Salisbury, have half the practices and potentially win a national championship yeah. every year? And, and, exactly. and I think that's the cool part. And I didn't really realize that until I did the series, until I met with Berkman. Yeah. The whole title of like, oh, I want to go D1. Like if I couldn't go top division one, I would definitely go D3. Yeah, top the top D3s kind of look like those yeah, lower yeah. end D1s in terms of like what they're getting. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I asked Salisbury on the video, I was like, do you think you guys could beat the worst team in division one? And that was UMass Lowell. And they all said yes. And, and yeah. I think they could they yeah. could do numbers on teams like that and, Absolutely. and teams in the mid majors. Absolutely. I think they're they're a top 45 to yeah. 50 division one team for sure. Yeah. 100%. That team was un unreal. Yeah. We played toughs. So that team beat it up on us. Well, what was the score? No, 21 to seven. We really? lost by 14. Wow. Yeah, they, that was a, that was a very solid Tufts team, and they end up beating them, yeah. and they made them look pretty bad. So yeah. then there is the conversation, right? I'm at a top 20 to 30 Division three team mm -hmm. every year, right? Below the top 50 Division threes. Yeah. Right. That's when you're getting to like actual high school looking yeah, lacrosse. lacrosse. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like the if you're going to a Hey, we were, we finished 100th in Division Three. That team could lose to a lot of good high school teams. Yes, you yeah. know what I mean. Yeah, like that yeah. team for sure is not somewhere you want to play high level lacrosse at. Yeah, if you're yeah. playing at a lower end Division One school, you could definitely look at the D3s at the top 20 level. You're gonna have a lot more fun in terms of like free time, right? Yeah. You think the Ducks could beat? the worst team in division one and no knack to UMass Lowell. That's what the stats say. Last year we had a phenomenal team. I think that last year we could, could have definitely beat them. I think all my teammates at home right now are saying for sure. Yeah. They're good lacrosse players. Yeah. Every division one team is good. Yeah. You know, I think that we would have had a good game with them. I think that we would have come out on top. We, we scrimmaged Wagner two years ago and we ended up beating them by four. So that kind of takes me to like the scholarship. Yeah. part of it like division three schools cannot have scholarships mm -hmm. whatsoever in terms of athletic money but they can have academic scholarships but you cannot have athletic scholarships yeah whereas d1 if you if you're a guy you you need the money to go yeah. to school right yeah. you need to get school paid off a little bit more yeah you want might want to go play a lower end division one yeah because you're going to get scholarship money yeah so you want to talk about yeah what yeah that i think like i think uh not ohio state i think it's just division one lacrosse mm -hmm. across all they have like 12 or 13 full scholarships yeah. to give out to the whole 50 main roster. Um, and I was very fortunate enough to get a 75% scholarship Damn. through my uh, my career. Good for you. And I think it just it just shows like how different it is again, right? Like for you guys, like you have to come in with good grades because if you don't, but mm -hmm. you're great at lacrosse, it doesn't matter because at the division three level, it's yeah. just not possible. Yeah. And I think at schools like Ohio State and all these other Division One schools, like they have that flexibility, right? That's again why like a kid that might be going lower D1 or D3 kind of picks a D1 route because they're getting scholarship money. Yeah. So just for me, I'm a little curious because obviously I did not play Division One lacrosse. Yeah. And growing up, that was a dream mm -hmm. of every every lacrosse player's dream. What was your be. school? What's your dream school? It was Duke growing up, but I think Notre Dame is where I would want to really? go. Really? Yeah. Interesting. I Duke could see. I could kind of see a Rutgers. Miles Jones, though. Come on. He. he <laughs> He, he, he laid out a path for me that I did not take. But, uh, you guys are just a little bit off in size. <laughs> 
It's a sad. Same name though. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what do like the away trips look like for you guys? If you're going to play Team Up North, we won't say it, but yep. what did Can't it look like? It. You're going over there. What, what did that day look like? I think the good part about that school was the fact that we didn't necessarily need to drive the night before, right? Yeah. So if we played them at noon, we'd get on the bus early that morning, mm -hmm. right? But if we were going down to, let's say, play Maryland on a Saturday, mm -hmm. we would drive down on a Friday right after practice. Okay. Or we would drive down Friday morning early, get there around middle of the day, have a practice on their turf, get to the hotel, shower up, come down for a dinner, have a film session, and then it was lights out by 10. And then tomorrow morning, game day, we yeah. would obviously have a breakfast, suits and tie ready, have a little prayer and off to the game. Yeah. And I think that was a big thing at Ohio State. It's very structured, like, you know, it's a business trip. We're suit and tie, we're mm. locked in, no one's smiling. It's it's game face on, yeah. and I think that was a cool part. What's it like for you? Because I have no idea, honestly. No, yeah. So like, it's kind of similar for like your same day trips, yeah. right? We're just taking the bus there yep. that morning. In terms of like overnights, that that is definitely a lot different, yeah. right? Like we're the only overnights that we kind of did were in the NCAA playoffs when we would play like the best teams. We would play like Dickinson yeah. and yeah. those types of schools. Dickinson, for example, we'll take the bus the night before, yeah. after practice as well, mm -hmm. and then we kind of go to the hotel and maybe we'll go watch some film yeah and then we'll have like dinner which is like a pizza or like nothing really? too crazy well it depends right like wow. we'll, it was, See, that was probably that's another difference right yeah. like for us we had the hotel cater whatever their meal was it was always yeah. grilled chicken mashed potatoes and like green beans yeah like sometimes we'll go out well, we would go out to eat a lot so like we would just you go, just to, like, go out with your buddy like we'd go out as a team and who somewhere. would pay for that and the school would pay for that oh, okay, okay yeah but then we would go back to the dorm or sorry to the hotel and we'd be watching film or something yeah. as a team for maybe an hour and then kind yeah. of just lights out it's not really too structured one of the biggest things was just how structured it was on yeah. away trips and it's, that's different with every school yeah but that, yeah 100 percent. it could we, be different for other division yeah. three schools we definitely though. got fed big time like some of the guys that didn't end up playing like they would always say on these away trips they put on a couple lbs because it's like yeah. we're done with practice on friday then we end up traveling up like you're getting food that whole time you get to the hotel for dinner you're getting fed yeah and the next day of breakfast you're getting fed and it's kind of the whole bit so obviously it's not that important to me but maybe it is to some of the guys guys out here. What does like the drug testing look like at Division yeah. 1? I only got tested once really in my four years, which is not that common. And it was like the first couple weeks of my freshman year. And it's pretty awkward. You get called up one by one. It takes so long. They give you a cup. You have to go into a stall, yeah. basically take your pants off God. and pee in a cup. And the yeah. guy is watching behind you. Ooh. Yeah. Some guys on the team that can't pee for like five or six hours because they get nervous. They, they get, get nervous? There's been people like that, yeah. Whoa. Because you got a guy hawk on Hawking you. Hawking you. Yeah, You're watching you. Nervous pisser. Is there anything like that D3 level? I mean, at this point, I have not been tested and like I don't know anybody that has been tested at my school. Yeah. I, it could be obviously different for other yeah. teams. A lot of teams have it as like their own policy too. Yeah. Like I know Division One teams, they want to test yeah. you as much as they can. Like, yeah. I don't think I will ever get tested in my four years. Yeah. What about on your guys and as far as facilities like mm -hmm. you have your field right that's probably every outside sport plays on yeah yeah for stevens is a little different right yeah. like we're in a city yeah so we have one field so even like our track team is like out there yeah so uh, that's crazy if you're going to like a gettysburg they yeah. have plenty of fields for you yeah but yeah, so we're definitely like itching for practice time. We got to yeah. have like nice schedule in terms of like other teams, like making sure that other teams aren't on. Yeah. That's when it's like kind of like high school. Yeah. In yeah, terms of like yeah. high school, it's like, all right, is girls lacrosse on right now? Yeah. Can or, I go on? Yeah. This and that? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, oh, like I can't shoot right now. Like yeah. there's a team out there. Yeah. What about you? Like I know I mean, you guys it's like just like 100% had it, right? different. Yeah. Like every team has its own field, own court. We just got our lacrosse only stadium. That's so it's like it. the only conflict is girls lacrosse and there's so many hours in a day. So we would usually practice in the morning they would practice in the afternoon and there'd be no conflict if they're out there practicing outside we would just go shooting in the indoor to get extra reps so Jeez. again it just it's it's with the perks of going to a bigger school i definitely miss my time though i think you're definitely gonna miss it i think it's a little bit different i have guys that you know graduated work in the cube and, and just working for the man yeah obviously i'm very fortunate to obviously do what i do and, and still talk about the sport so i don't miss it as much as mm -hmm. some of my friends but you know when i watch a lacrosse game this spring i'll be like damn it damn. feels really weird you know yeah. it still feels weird not playing and fall across yeah. uh, first time in, in like 20 years. Yeah, it's funny because you could have. Yeah. You had that fifth year, you yeah. didn't take it though. Yeah, but I'm excited to continue down this path. I mean, Miles and I hop on calls probably once a week, talk about YouTube, and I think we've really learned a lot from each other. Mm -hmm. And uh, to really see where mine and his channel goes, yeah, I was absolutely. gonna be really excited. And uh, I just think we're both in the learning stage right now. And I think yep. 
to get it out of that would be dumb. Or that's when we're like kind of similar in terms yeah. of like D1, D3, right? We have this other kind of job yeah. that we're doing yeah. too. Yeah. So like if we're talking to another guy that doesn't do any of the social media stuff, it yeah. might be a little bit different of a conversation here. Yeah, that's like the sure. tough part. And I think like when I was balancing it, like it was tough, but I think it's way harder now. I actually post this video tomorrow, the 28th, check it out. It's called yeah. the hardest year of my life. I essentially say when I had practice, when I had class, like I had to go. Mm -hmm. that, was a, that was a way for me to kind of get away from the laptop or camera. But now like I don't have to do anything. So mm -hmm. like I'll work out and then work and then sleep and then that's yeah. my day. Yeah, no. So yeah. it's like tough. It's definitely not healthy and <laughs> I think like, no, it's really not though, because I'm working like the whole day. I don't really do anything. He's a grinder. Yeah, it's like fun. I enjoy it, but at the same time, it's like, I don't know, I struggle with it. But no, yeah. Obviously, you guys know trying to move out to a Hoboken or the city here soon will definitely help that aspect. Yeah. I think it's big. Playing a college sport, whatever it yeah. is, Division One or Division Three is going to set you up. Yeah, definitely. For when you're. I at. mean, look at us, right? Like, yeah. the, look at. I was with the Curse Brothers today, Jules Henningberg today. Like, not the sport of lacrosse, you know, where would these guys be, right? Yeah. Where would we be, right? You know, lacrosse is really given us everything from our playing career to our content career. Even our career. work ethic. Yeah, know, seriously. Just like and I think the one thing I've realized, I want to surround myself with people that have played college sports because that work ethic is something I really admire. People that are on my team are my friends and I think that's how we've gotten so close to just like, we, we share so many like-minded habits with how we work. You know, he's doing seven videos. Seven videos, seven, seven days. Seven days. Like, Let's go. Let's back go. in high school, I did 30 videos <laughs> in 30 days, right? Like, yeah. and it just comes to show like, if you want to make it in this social media game, it's, it's about the grind. Yeah, that's can't all it stop. is. Yeah. Can't stop. Let us know down below, like what, what you guys want to hear about next. I think this is pretty cool. I think this has been done before too. Never seen before on Lax YouTube. I love I saying love that. that. I love saying that. But Literally every video we could say that. I know. We're Never like seen pioneers. before. Yeah. Let's go. Pioneers in the space. Yeah. But make sure you guys check out Mitch's page. If you haven't, he's killing it on YouTube right now. But make sure you guys also subscribe down below at yes, this sir. channel. What subscribers are we at? 10.8K. Come on, can we get to 11? I know, we gotta can get, we to, get 11. to 11. Can we get to 11? Give me two more. Subscribe down below, like, comment. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> He's at the light. <laughs>